In this video, I'm going to talk about ticket categories. I'm going to talk about what they are, how they work, and how best to set them up. And we'll also go through a real-world scenario on how to use ticket categories. So let's go and have a look at how we would set this up. So the first place we would go is into the admin module, into features and settings. And then under service desk tickets, we're going to click on ticket categories. So from here, we can click on new. And this gives us the ability, obviously, to create a brand new ticket category. So let's say we had one that we wanted uh, for new user requests. So um, we can simply just type whatever it's about. So in this case, it's going to be new user request. Um, we can then choose bits of information that we want inside this ticket. So this is essentially what the ticket form is going to look like. So you can see we've got a general tab, details tab, and an insights tab. And I'll explain all of these as we, as we go through them. So if we look here under ticket type, when we first select this, we get the option of whether this is going to be a service request or an incident or problem. In this particular instance, we're just going to go ahead and choose this as a service request. We can also choose the title or we can leave the title blank. If you leave the title blank, what will happen is obviously then your users will uh, need to fill in whatever the title is. So just to show you, and we'll be doing this all the way through this video, we have the save and try it button. So if I simply say save and try it, oh. So if I say save and try it, for example, what you can actually see in here is that we have the ability to try this form. Okay, this is one of the nicest features of this because you don't have to keep going back in and, um, uh, you know, actually opening up a new ticket by clicking on the plus sign. You can just simply click the save and try it. So you can see here that the title is, is empty. So I can go ahead and fill something into that. But what if I wanted to force them to um, to have this information already entered in here? So maybe I could say something like new user request. Um, and then I could still actually get um, my user to fill something in there. So maybe here you could put, you know, the username or something to that effect. So when I click on OK and I click on save and try it again, you'll actually see now that will actually be pre filled in for this ticket category. So if we open up this ticket category, you can see here we've got our new user request and we've got this information that's pre-filled into the ticket category. OK, so let's carry on going all the way through this. So again, you can do the exact same thing with description. And what I normally like to do at this point is I, I normally would put something like, um, you know, please fill in as much information as possible. And I put them between uh, two sideways braces. So this now gives you the ability again to say, you know, please enter in as much information as possible. It really depends on you guys as to whether you fill this in. I find that some people say if they leave this filled in, then their users tend not to, um, you know, not to fill anything else in there. And of course, that then ends up going to the customer. So it really depends on 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 you as a as a business if you want somebody to fill in that description or you want them to say, you know, please enter as much information as possible in there. Now, one of the things you can do at this point as well is you can add a checklist. So you can see, you know, if this was for a new user category, we might want to have a checklist in here that we can very quickly go ahead and and, uh, and, and add about this particular thing. So certain things we want users to be able to check, uh, you know, before they create a new user. And I'll come back to that. Uh, but for now, let's just go into the details tab and let's look through here in, in, in detail as well. So, you know, if we wanted to, again, we can pre-fill in any of this information. What I normally tend to do is I would always make sure that I select the new status in here. So this is going to say when a ticket is created, the status is automatically going to be selected as new. Again, if I leave this box blank, then of course, by leaving it blank, I'm now giving the users the ability to choose what this is. Um, so you can see the status is now blank and they have to go in here and, and choose something. Now, of course, they still have to do that even if it's new, but at least I can um, I can say that, you know, if they do nothing else, if they just click on save and close um, at this point. So by setting this to new, if they click on, you know, save and close when they create the, the ticket, it's automatically going to set the ticket uh, to, to the new status. So I always tend to fill those in. So now you can see it's pre-filled in on the new status. Now, one of the things to see at this point is, you know, if I'm an engineer and I wanted to come and change this, 
what I'd have to do here is I've got a whole long list of statuses, right? And at this point, I may not know what status this is supposed to be on, or, you know, I might just, um, you know, see a long list and just select any old status. So how do we get rid of this? How do we actually make this ticket category only show the statuses that we want? Now, that's really straightforward. Underneath the status column here, you can see it says available list values is all. So if we simply click on all, what we can do is we can edit it. And then in here, we can choose the ones that we do not want available in this list and what we do want available. So what I normally do is I normally just move all of them away. It will give you a, a, an error message saying that obviously it's the default value, so it needs to stay there. But if you just push it back into the available category, we're now going to say, you know, what we want for this type of category is, is new. You know, we want in progress. We also want, um, you know, possibly... Um, to say waiting on customer and then maybe we just want a closed status as well or completed status so when I save and close this and I go in and I, I actually do a, a, a try you'll now see that what will actually happen on the status you'll see that it's actually now set to be just those statuses that uh, that I've set in there. So if I click on status, I now can only change it to one of these things. So this is where the real power of ticket categories comes in, is it allows you to determine what information actually gets displayed in here. It also allows you to determine even whether things get displayed. So we'll go through and we'll, we'll show you how we can remove some of these fields from the ticket category. So the same thing with priority, same, same rules apply. You know, we can set this to, you know, maybe starting it as a low priority, but, you know, let's go in and say, you know, the only priorities we ever want this to be changed to is, you know, possibly a medium and a high, um, you know, and uh, sorry, we don't want medium and high. Uh, actually, let's move these ones around. So we say, you know, we don't want those, but we want medium and high and we want low and critical. Same, same rules apply. Anything that's in there, those are the only ones that they can now select from that particular, uh, you know, drop down. So let's come back to here as well. Now we can see that, you know, on that screen we had issue type and sub issue type. So again, if I hit save and try it, um, we now have in here the ability to use um, the those two, two drop downs I mentioned earlier on, you know, the, the, the issue type, same rules, right? So if I click on here, I can see a whole bunch of issue types. But what if for this particular ticket category, I don't even want to have those issue types. I can simply remove those. Um, and I can do that really easily. So what I can do is just simply say, do you know what? I actually don't want to even see these fields. So I can simply just click on hide. I can hide this this field. Um, and then I can hide the issue type field as well. And those fields have now disappeared from the form. So again, if I click on save and try it, what this will give me the ability to do is you'll actually see on here, once we, uh, once we look at this ticket form, you'll see that we've actually hidden those fields completely. So they are now not even part of this ticket at all. So really, really gives you the ability to pretty much customize any of the information that you want on this form. So the other thing we can do is we can actually get rid of entire sections as well. So, you know, if I didn't want any of this queue or resource or any of this section, I could simply go ahead and remove it. Or if I didn't want to display any of the billing section, I could simply just hide the entire section. And it will do the same as hiding those um, issue type and sub issue type fields. It will just hide that entire section from the form. But equally, what if I wanted to move that around? So at the moment, if I actually said, you know, for this particular one, I do want to obviously have the assignment uh, box in there because this is going to determine what queue it goes into. It's also going to determine the primary resource. But you can see it's all the way down after this ticket information screen. So what if I wanted this right at the top or wanted just the queue at the top here under the ticket information? Well, again, I can actually quite easily do that. So I can simply just move the queue to where I want it to be. So under the ticket information, I can say, put the queue in there. And then what I could actually do is just drag this entire section up. So I could just come onto here on section two. I could move this right up if I wanted to and move every part uh, of these uh, these sections. I could move them all the way up through the, um, you know, through that list. So here you can now see from here, I've got the assignment, so I've got the primary resource, and then I've actually got the queue sitting down here. So if you really wanted to, you could pretty much move these to wherever you want them to be, wherever it makes the most amount of sense for you to move these things into. 
Okay, so because this is a, a new user request ticket category, you know, there might be some other information that we actually specifically want to capture about this. So we're obviously going to want to capture the username. We're going to want to capture the password. We can do all of that really easily through something called user defined fields. So if we look through here, we can already see we have a whole bunch of user defined fields in here. So, you know, we already have some that we have have created at some point on, um, you, you know, username, passwords, email addresses, all that kind of stuff. So let's actually go and create a new section here. So we'll create this as a new section and maybe we'll call this, um, you know, specific information. So let's say, you know, we'll call this specific information. And then from here, we can either use one of these user defined fields that we've already got. So, you know, in here we'll have username, for example, we'll have, um, you know, we'll, we'll have the password, we'll have all of that kind of stuff. So let's go down and find out where we have the, uh, the username. So it's going to be down the bottom here. Okay, we've got username there. So what we can simply do is we can just drag this UDF up to where we want it to be. Okay, um, and very simply, we can just say, you know what, we're just going to move this into that new category that we created or that new section that we created um, and we're simply just going to move that to where we want it to be so I'm just going to drop it there for now um, and then what I can do is I can say um, you know here's the specific information so if I move it back down into specific information what you'll see is I've now put the username field into there so I can go and do the same thing with all of these I can simply just drag all of these fields up so there's going to be a password one in here somewhere and maybe department or, or any of that kind of stuff so here we are user department so let's go and pull this back up in there as well okay so we're going to move it all the way to where we want it to be underneath the specific information field and if there's something in particular that you want, you can then just go and create a new user defined field at this point as well. So maybe now I'm going to say, um, you know, something like manager name. Okay, I want to know who that person's manager is. And I can choose what kind of information this is going to be. So if I click manager name. Okay, there is already one there. So maybe if we just say manager's name. So I could have obviously used that one that was there already, but this is just to illustrate the point uh, that you can go ahead and create one. What it'll do is it'll drop it all the way down at the bottom. So again, I can just move this to where I want it to be. So I think if we leave it at that for now, so we say, you know, on this particular form, what I want to do is have username, the user department and the manager's name. Obviously, I'd probably put a password one in there as well, but you can very simply see now by adding those, I've now brought that field and that category directly into here. So if I scroll down, I can see that they write down at the bottom. Now, this is the other great thing about them. By default, they create down at the bottom here. But again, this is meaning my users are going to have to scroll to find this information. So I want that to be kind of, you know, at, at line of sight. Um, so maybe what I would then say is, OK, well, tell you what I'm going to do. You know, on that particular area, on this specific information, I'm just going to drag this whole thing right to the very top. And then when I click on save and try it, this is now going to give me the ability to see this right at the very, very top. Well, right at the very, very top besides this information. So this bit here will always sit uh, at the very top panel. But here you can see username, user department, manager's name, and the user department is a drop down box. So I can choose marketing, whatever the case might be. Now, the other really nice thing is you can actually use these user defined fields across all ticket categories. So the fact that you've you've created them, even if you created them here um, for every ticket category that you ever go into, they'll always be down here at the bottom. So these are globally set, even though you're setting them up here on this um, this button but what you can do at this point which is really cool is you can say you know what like for example all these three i actually want these to be required and i'm going to force them on this particular ticket category to actually make these required so let's just go and do that right so you have to fill this information in um, because obviously this is the information we want to capture so let's go and fill this in directly okay now what we can do again if we hit save and try it we can actually see that this information will now be uh, be set so that we have to be forced to enter this information. And there it is again. So you can see it's now made them compulsory. And if I try and save anything on here, it's going to make them with red outlines around them, which means I basically have to fill in that information. 
Okay, so earlier on I alluded to this checklist. So let's go and have a look at how we would set this up. So for example, maybe what I'm going to say is, you know, before we go ahead and set up um, this ticket category and we, we're happy with it, we may want there to be a few things. So maybe we need to just check that they already exist in, in AD, for example. Right, so what we could do is to set up a checklist. We set those up globally. So if we go into features and settings, and then what we can do is go into application wide settings. And at this point, we can click on checklists. So you can see we've got a whole bunch of different checklists in here. But let's just create a new one. Um, what we can do, in fact, there, there is a new user creation one here, so we could probably just actually use this one. So if we click on edit, you can see the kinds of things that we need to check. So, you know, create ID account, add them to the groups, etc., etc. And maybe we want an option in here that says, um, you know, before they do anything to actually, um, you know, check to see if they already exist in AD. Okay, so we want to check to see if they already exist in AD. And then the other thing we actually want to do is we want the step to happen first. So again, we can move it up to where we want it to be, click on save and close. Now, what we would do at this point is we can go into that same ticket category that we had earlier on. So if we said, uh, you know, go back to this, this ticket category, and from here, we would say, you know, on this particular ticket category, which will be at the bottom, new user request. What we can do is to click into here and say, uh, you know, let's go and select a checklist. And we say the default checklist for this, we want it to be this new user creation one. And when we click on save and try it, it's going to save that ticket category. And what you'll see will happen here now is that that ticket category uh, will now have that checklist available. So here is the checklist that we have to check off and you can see, you know, check that they already exist in AD. I could have marked that as being important if I wanted to, um, but you have the ability to, to check those. Now, what important means is that if, uh, you know, if you try and close the ticket, it's going to actually pop up a box to tell you that, you know, you're closing a ticket. There's some important checklist uh, items that you haven't yet checked off uh, it's going to give you the option to say do you want to do this Are you sure you wish to close this ticket now one of the other things you'll notice against this checklist is that there's this little book icon here so this little book icon actually links into the uh, knowledge base so you can see you can link a knowledge base article to it obviously it's got the wrong knowledge base article linked to it but in this particular instance you might want to link this to okay how do i go and check all of this in in ad right so it's now giving my users the ability to actually check this off and the ability to say um you know how do i go create this account in active directory okay so you have the ability to show uh, all of that information and that's it that's really uh, you know, how you would go ahead and, and create a ticket category and, you know, potentially using this ticket category for new user requests in your business. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and we'll see you on the next one.